What will the day of judgment be like for all that trust in Christ? That's the question that we are asking and answering in today's daily devotion. I'm Pastor John Blevins. It's Wednesday, December 30th, 2020. Almost to the end of the year and the beginning of a new. Well, as we seek to understand this question and to hear its answer and expound upon it, let's begin a hearing from God. As we take one of our study passages down below, we're going to turn in the Bible to the New Testament, to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We're going to read verses 13 through 18. This is God's perfect inerrant word. Let's hear from him. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Well, as I mentioned, that's one of several of our study passages down in the description uh, that we have uh, available today for you to read, reflect upon as you hear God, and then pray and talk to Him, uh, hopefully enjoying a fruitful time of fellowship with your Creator, your Savior. Well, these study passages as we've been talking about throughout the year. They're the summary of what the scriptures are teaching about this question. These study passages, they come together and they give us our theology portions. We're going to start off in Westminster Shorter Catechism, question 38, which asks, what benefits do believers receive from Christ at the resurrection? At the resurrection, believers being raised up in glory shall be openly acknowledged and acquitted in the day of judgment and made perfectly blessed in the full enjoying of God to all eternity. We turn now to Westminster Larger Catechism. We're going to read question 90, which asks, What shall be done to the righteous at the day of judgment? At the day of judgment, the righteous, being caught up to Christ in the clouds, shall be set on his right hand, and there openly acknowledged and acquitted, shall join with him in the judging of reprobate angels and men, and shall be received into heaven, where they shall be fully and forever freed from all sin and misery, filled with inconceivable joys, made perfectly holy and happy, both in body and soul, in the company of innumerable saints and holy angels, but especially in the immediate vision and fruition of God the Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit, to all eternity." And this is the perfect and full communion, which the members of the invisible church shall enjoy with Christ in glory at the resurrection and the day of judgment. Well, there is so much wonderful, wonderful truth here. Encouraging hope for all those who trust in Christ and repent of their sins. Uh, For those who might be listening who who do not have a saving faith in Christ, I hope that as you hear this, it will draw your heart to our Savior. We're going to expand even a little more as we've expanded upon our passage in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and we went to our theology portion, which is an expansion, a summary of what the Bible teaches regarding this very question we're asking, what will the day of judgment be like for all that trust in Christ? Well, expanding just a little more, taking it to the next level, I'm going to read the writings of Johannes Voss, as he's addressing this very, very question. And he addresses the question by asking and answering a few more questions. 
What is meant by saying that the righteous shall be openly acknowledged and acquitted? This means, first, that the Lord Jesus Christ, acting as judge, will publicly declare before the whole universe that these people who've been persecuted and reproached because of their faith in him are his own people, upon whom his special love has been bestowed and whom he has redeemed from sin to be his spiritual body. Second, that Christ, acting as judge, will pronounce his people to be not guilty of the slightest sin and perfectly righteous before the law of God because he himself has borne the guilt of their sin by his atonement and because of his own perfect righteousness which has been reckoned or imputed to them just as if it were their own personal righteousness. So what's the meaning of the statement that the saints shall join with Christ in judging reprobate angels and men? This truth, which is set forth in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 2 and 3, does not mean that the saints will have authority of, of their own to determine the eternal destiny of angels or men, for this solemn function belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Rather, the meaning is that the saints shall join or concur with Christ in the sentence which he will pro pronounce upon the wicked angels and men. As Christ pronounces sentence, the saints will give their assent, approving of his judgment as righteous. As Satan and the wicked angels have grievously troubled and afflicted God's people for thousands of years, and as wicked men have oppressed and persecuted and reproached God's children, it is very fitting that the saints, having been vindicated by the great judge, shall join in the sentence to be pronounced upon the fallen angels and wicked men. What is meant by saying that the righteous shall be received into heaven? This means that the judgment day will mark their entrance as total personalities with both body and soul into the place as well as the condition of total blessedness. The remainder of the answer to question 90 deals with the character of this place and condition of perfect blessedness. So why can we not have perfect blessedness here and now? Well, there are several reasons why the Christian cannot enjoy complete blessedness here and now, such as, first, we cannot see our Savior's face face-to-face -face here and now. Second, the facts of bodily infirmity, sickness, and pain prevent the enjoyment of total blessedness now. Third, the sinful corruption which remains in the Christian's own heart here on earth, which necessitates a constant battle against temptation and sin, prevents the enjoyment of total blessedness now. Fourth, here on earth the Christian is surrounded by a wicked and miserable environment, and the more holy the Christian becomes, the more he feels distressed by the presence and effects of sin in his surroundings. So how will these various factors in our present condition be changed in heaven? First, we shall see our Savior face to face. Second, our mortal body, which is afflicted with pain, sickness, weakness, and fatigue, will put on immortality. All sickness, pain, and distress will forever pass away, and what is mortal will be swallowed up of life. Third, the sinful corruption of our own hearts and the constant conflict against sin and temptation, which results from it, will come to an end at the moment of death. Fourth, the environment of heaven will be perfectly holy, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defiles neither whatsoever works abomination or makes a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Look to Revelation 21, verse 27, and Revelation 22, 15. You can see the great encouragement for God's people. There is so much more that could be discussed, but... Our time is short for our daily devotions. Hopefully this will be just a, a beginning encouragement, a beginning opening to the great truths that we see in Scripture. Uh, it'll be just a, a glimpse. And perhaps we'll encourage you to, to prayerfully seek out through first reading those study passages that are down in the description and then um, for yourself getting your hands on some good, solid theology. But start with God's Word 
and prayerfully enjoy those study passages, reading them, understanding what God has told us in regards to the blessed future that his people have. Well, until we're together tomorrow, Lord willing, for our last and final daily devotion for 2020, may our great God bless and keep you.